We are your home theater and AV questions answered. This is AV Rant. Want your home theater or AV question answered by Tom and Rob? Send it to question at avrant.com. Welcome to AV Rant. I'm Tom Antry and I'm here with Rob H. McMansion Chris. Now, for those of you who don't know, Chris lives in the McMansion. It's massive. <laughs> He'll deny so, it. But he will deny it, but then again, uh, over a 10, it's only not a McMansion. Space, so. It's only not a McMansion when he compares it to his friends' places, which are. Or the other yeah. people who've been writing into us lately with 14,000 cubic feet, 15,000 yeah, cubic What's up feet? with that, man? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like. Those are mansion maybe. mansions, not McMansions. That's the difference. Yeah, maybe. So, anyways, he's curious about the lifespan of a speaker. All right, the lifespan of speaker, I'll just tell you right now before we get started on that, until it dies. And that's, <laughs> that's as long as it goes. In fact, that's pretty much true of everything. So what lifespan can be expected from good quality, reputable brand speakers when used regularly, say three movies per week, at reference volume and no abuse? Forever? I mean, it can't be, it, I mean, it can't, can't be I wouldn't forever. Say forever. I, I honestly believe that you will shorten the lifespan of your speakers by not using them. The... The surrounds will dry no, out. True. Well, I mean, I, 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 I'll tell you what. It's been crazy lately. In my office area, I there's a lot of equipment that I rarely use. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've used it before, and every once in a while I'll take it out and use it again. There's some things I use all the time. The stuff I'm using right now for the for the podcast, you use all the time. My uh, PM2 speakers from Oppo, use them all the time. But there's like little things I don't use that much. That Cambridge Audio little audio DAC thing, mm. haven't used it in six months, maybe a year. The uh, Stealth, uh, Emotiva Stealth DNC1, haven't used it in two years. Powdered it up the other day, wouldn't it come on. Mm. It's just been sitting there. So I vacuumed it out, cleaned it up a little bit, wouldn't it come on. Banged it, came on. <laughs> All right. So I guess I guess I fixed it. I don't know. I haven't turned it on since. I just turned it on, made sure it work, and turned it back off again. Cambridge Audio thing, it's completely stopped working. Yeah. No idea why. So I, mean, I don't the, know. The first thing that's going to go on a speaker is going to be the surround on one of the woofers. That's going to be that, either rubber or foam. Right. With modern ones, with the treated rubber that they're tending to use now, I mean, I'd, I'd say at least 25 to 30 years. At least. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think that having them sit in one orientation for a super long time is more detrimental Maybe. to them than than having than moving them every once in a while. Yeah. That is the one thing I'm worried about. Literally, almost everything else on this thing is passive. It doesn't really do much. Yeah. I mean, the idea of the woofer is that it it doesn't move. I mean, the the, the, the diaphragm shouldn't flex. You know, it's going a little bit, but it shouldn't. The only thing that's really getting a lot of movement is this is the spider that's inside the mm-hmm. speaker. And the surround, and the surround is open to the elements a lot more so yeah. uh, than the than the spider is, and that's what's going to go first. Yeah, electronically, and, I guess it would be the capacitors that would go first, but modern yeah. capacitors last sixty to seventy years. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say twenty five to thirty years. That's my guess. Yeah, I think that's fairly. And even then, it'll I, probably be fine, but I'd I'd give it at least that. There are speakers right now people are listening to right now that were made oh, yeah, in the 40, 70s, 50 and years old, absolutely. and they're still listening to them. For sure. So. Our speakers are better made, at least from the driver standpoint, than those speakers were. And you know, the cabinets—I don't think have changed all that much. But you yeah. know, the rest of it, you know. And I, I think you can last that long for sure. So he says, "How can you tell if a speaker is reaching the end of its life? Are there checks or tests that can be performed, dude? If it still makes sound, <laughs> it's still alive. It's there's no like, you know, it starts to get old and wheezy. It either does what it's supposed to do, or it's broken. There's no in between. You know, not with a speaker." So I mean, there could be sur- fairly subtle damage, you know. So might like not be what? super. Well, I mean, like you know, if the if the rubber starts to harden a little bit on that surround, that's not going to be a you know gone from perfect to failure. There, there's there is some in between there. But yeah, there, I, mean, I I don't know how audible that's going to be. Well, that's I just mean, it. it. That's what yeah. I, I said. It's be subtle. So there there is an in between. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, think that's that you're going to notice that it suddenly starts going. <laughs> I mean, you you can just like visually that. inspect the surround of the woofers because that is the first thing that will go. Yeah. So. So it's a little rubber part around the outside, yep. in case you're not un- unsure of what that surround is. It's what connects the outside of the the, the speaker, the the yeah, very the like the frame of it yeah. to the diaphragm material, whatever yeah. that diaphragm material is. Uh, 
and most of the time these your speakers are going to get busted because some kid pokes them long before any of this <laughs> happens that's right so yeah so lastly how long should someone hold on to a set of speakers before they get too old or too used to still be able to sell them for a good price so rule of thumb for this is there an optimal time to sell speakers for the highest return for the stuff working or will buyers be thinking that they're close to the end of their useful life that is super a... dependent on the speaker <laughs> it's really i'll tell you what it's this is worse than uh trying to buy comic books for mm. resale the, you are betting because most of the speakers 10 years from now are either going to be gone and no one's going to care about them or they're going to the, the company themselves are still going to be around and will have upgraded or changed and people are not going to when they go back and get these old speakers yeah like the you could have some way... like 60 year old clip horns that someone would pay, would pay a mint for if they're in good condition Right. Or you could have speakers from five years ago that I couldn't possibly care less, and I would like you'd have to pay me to take them off your hands. Right. So, <laughs> so it kind of comes dependent. down to this whole yeah, this nostalgia thing of whether or not this particular brand or this particular model, not even brand, yeah, yeah. model, like uh, within Clips, there's a I mean, there's a, a huge number of speakers that they've made over the years that you couldn't give away, and right. there's a couple that you could sell for a lot of money, yeah. regardless of their of their, their quality. It's just really do you, uh, the, the speakers are like as far as i'm concerned are like boats you buy them to enjoy them you don't buy them to resell them if you can resell them and make money or make some of your money back good on you you got lucky you won the lottery that day the itty bitty lottery but you won the lottery most of the time you're just you just it's it's, it's a sunk cost and you're done but there are kind of the there's the two edge cases right there's the Ones that, for whatever reason, became like kind of a famous model among audiophiles, and those right. would be worth a lot of money if they're good condition. And then those are the ones that were like infamous as being really bad, and you you wouldn't be able to give them away. For everything that's sort of in the middle, can we say there's a? I mean, let's just say it's like you know, Paradigm's been around for ages, and their speakers have always been pretty darn good, and they haven't drastically changed over the years. So someone had some Paradigm monitor series speakers. Okay, two generations. All right. I that would say fair. two generations. I, I don't think anything more than I, I'm not. I'm not going to go back. I, even Axiom, which I know their speakers haven't yeah. changed in iota, <laughs> in the in the time that they've made them, they're using different parts, but they they want them to all to sound the same, and they haven't changed their sound. They just call it a different thing once the drivers start to change because they got different sources. I would. Uh, I don't think that anybody who's really interested was going to go back. Whether they on now V4 or V5? Yeah, I, I don't, don't know. know. They're out there. Know. Let's let's pretend they're V4. I, I I think you can probably get away with selling V2s. You'd have a hard time selling V1s. And likewise, if they're on V5, then V2s. I think you would have a hard. I time mean, I'd selling. still pick up a. Uh, okay, so if it was like the TIs, right? The TIs came before the V2s. And yeah. I'm like the TIs were still very nice speakers. I'd I'd pay something for them. I mean, I'd I'd probably pay about the same for the TIs as the V2s. I don't I don't see a big difference there because there wasn't. And I don't think you're going to get very much for them either, <laughs> yeah. to be honest with you. Uh, you know, all right. They're years. Okay. I Two like jets. That. Sounds good to you. Once your question answered, send it to question at avrant.com. A.V. Rant. Now go out and listen to something.